Welcome everybody, we are starting into our ESO housing hike. This is showcasing creative player homes in the Elder Scrolls Online. Seeing the cool things you can do with the houses, with the furnishings, and with a little bit of creativity and design, you can do amazing things, infinite possibilities. And I'm J.R. Ellis, I'll be your tour guide, as we visit a bunch of homes right now on the PCNA server. This is something I stream live each week at twitch.tv slash J.R. Ellis. You're always welcome to join during the live stream, or if you're watching on the YouTube VOD, if you could please subscribe, that helps a lot. So we're going to start here in Lindus Liliac's Observatory Prior. They say that they have a... Well, we'll get to it here in the sub-level. The sub-level? Hmm. Through here. Through here. Where are we going? To... The sub-level! It's a submarine! Oh my gosh! Appropriate, appropriate. <laughs> okay. We're going to hop in here. Oh! Fun, fun, fun. Hop in right in. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, Observatory Prior doesn't really look anything like this. So, they totally changed this up. Oh, yeah. So, we have everything that you need with the submarine. Definitely feels like we're underwater here, too. So, we have a, a glass-fronted submarine. That's pretty cool. It's not like the really claustrophobic subs that you think of, where it's just a tube of metal, and because that's kind of how it has to be to keep the pressure up and everything, right? So, anyway, or maybe it's digital displays, whatever it is. I'm assuming it's glass. Magical, reinforced future glass, right? Metal, invisible metal, Star trek -y, whatever it is. Anyway, we can see outside, we can see the ocean around us. Or, whatever it is, it's maybe a little magical. Maybe it's not quite the ocean. Maybe it's an alien world. Feels a little alien. Anyway, we have a sub. Can I like, sit here in the captain's chair? Oh, I think so. Cool. Get the moo horns in the shot there. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, beautiful. So we have a sub. With the fish. With all of the navigation and everything that you need here. Glass HUD, like Disney's Atlantis. Maybe it is that. It's like the Nautilus. Jelly. I like the jellyfish. So this is using the Talvani sconces. They kind of have that jellyfishy look to them. So it's super creative. Well, that's just kind of the uh, outside. Let's actually take a look at the sub itself here. So they're using a, like the Dwarven tonal arcs. They're using a lot of these scavenging support beams. And a lot of these are from the Brass Fortress Home Goods Furniture. Uh, this arc here is from the Undaunted Quartermaster next to the Pledge Givers. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So this is from Lindis Liliac on PCNA. Oh, 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 I see we're getting ready to go diving here. Oh, that's fantastic. We have the Factotum. Kind of has this robotic body, but a robotic suit here. Pressure suit here. How do they make that? With a glass bulb in the front? No, no, how did they do this? It is a... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the further thing that they used. They used like a big... Nord urn for the bulk of it. What is this glass thing? One second. Can I identify it? Oh, I don't think I can. It is a big bottle of some sort. It's a specimen jar. Oh, 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 okay, that's clever. Because normally that would have like a floating intestines or something in it. Kind of gross thing. But they, they kind of sunk that in so you don't see that. I don't think it's a Talvani one. The Talvani one is much smaller. Um, I think you're right about it being a specimen jar. Okay, anyway. It's, it's, it's not the luxury one. The luxury one is... Oh, maybe it is the luxury one. This is smaller than I think it is. It's not like player size. Could could just be the Talvani one. Anyway. Uh, Amon Kira, 23 with a follow. Thank you. Welcome to our NA housing hike. We're about to go diving. Get our pressure suit on. Get all of our... Gas is balanced and everything. I think we're ready to go. Go exploring here. It's a jar. It's just a... <laughs> anyway. It might be the Telvani jar from the luxury vendor. Anyway. It's fine. It's fine. Yep, yep. All the pressurized goodness and everything going on. And we have a map of the area so we don't get lost. Probably easy to do that. Okay. Just really looking at all the creativity here. I love it. I love it. It's very immersive. Uh, so Linda Stoliak has done an amazing job of making it feel like I'm in a giant sub. 
And let's see, what do we have here? Special treat notes for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Welcome aboard the sub. And get a pearl. Ah, pearl prize. Something very valuable from outside. I see. That's maybe what we're going to go grab more of here. Spooky specimen jars don't have the glass dome shaped like that. I thought, no, they don't. They don't. They, they're just cylindrical. Anyway, that might be the Delta Bonnie one. It's so much smaller than I think it is. Like, it's, it looks like a player, but the precursor is actually kind of small. Um, especially sunk down there. A lot of detail. Tons of detail. feel like I'm under the, under the ocean. Deep, deep, deep. I like how they have all these upside-down waterfalls so that they shoot these beams up. It looks like, you know, deep underwater vents. Or same with it. I think the Aeliad light well sunk down there, too. Absolutely fantastic and creative and can kind of imagine that you're going and looking at things and doing experiments here and all the exploration. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. First of six houses to visit today. We'll continue along with our housing hike. I always like to identify the weird ones. Anyway, the, the main important thing there is looking at textures on furnishing. So if you see a glass jar and you're like, oh, that's just a perfect size for a submarine diving suit, right? I think so. I think that's what you can do with it. When it's slowly like, oh, you're here. They say thanks for visiting. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You said it's a specimen jar. Oh, it is a specimen jar. I always thought those were tiny. Anyway, like for the 10th time. Okay, um, every summer has Emmyland. We have, to the left, we have tickets, a carousel. Okay, we have some rides. We have a fun place here. We're in for a fun time. Okay, we're going to get our tickets. And my ticket right here. Okay, good deal, good deal. Drunk Alfique doesn't realize I don't have a ticket. But that's fine. I'm just going to go sneak in. Okay, fun. We have a carousel. Every summer. Does these really amazing three-dimensional pieces. I really like this. Using a lot of the dwarven pieces that came with Markarth DLC. Have these really bright, polished brass textures on them, so they work pretty well. So I can imagine that these chairs would go up and down. I really like how they've used these tracks on the back, these relief tracks, because I can imagine totally that these chairs would be going up and down as it's going around and around, right? It's like perfect. Alfique's going on along for a ride here. So really fun design on that. And we have the fun music playing. Feels festive. Makes sense given the theme here. Oh, we have like a huge Ferris wheel in the back. Oh, well, I, I gotta go check this out. <laughs> that is a ton of those Conal Frustum. Frustrum? Dwarven pieces. Oh, craftable pieces. That's a lot of Dwemer frames and mundane runes that went into that too. Oh my gosh. Arcs and sprockets. Yeah, mo most everything that you see here is craftable. Um... So you don't have to go, like, crown store exclusive or furnishing bundles or antiquities. You can craft these up. They're going to be pricey, especially if you're doing them in numbers like this. But, you know, maybe that's why I talk about our gold making tips every Monday. <laughs> um, how housing is the end game. It's where all of everybody's gold ends up going eventually. Um, anyway, love this, love this. It's so bright. What are they using for these little uh, the boxes here? Can I go into one? Oh, I'll go into one. Can I s s oh, oh, it's big enough for a cat. Can I go in? Oh, I can go in. Perfect. I don't know if I can sit down, but I can at least kind of pretend I'm here. Okay, time to go for a ride. It's not moving. That's fine. <laughs> Way too impressive, right? So, yeah, what are they using here? They're using multiple, like, tons of tables. Every single one of these is, like, four of these, ta five of these tables. That's awesome, awesome. More than that, even. They have, oh, that's perfect. They're using the candlesticks just to kind of have the support here. This is inspired. I, I, I love the design of it. And it feels like it's, like, sound like it's not they they could have pared this down a little bit 
but if this feels like it's more like actual functional, right? Like totally, totally could work. Perfect use of a lot of the new structural pieces too. I see the circular floor kind of in the middle there. This kind of supports this all very well. Absolutely stunning. Great, great, great. Oh, quick, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you with the resub there. Super, super appreciate that. Keep making all the move happy things happen. Like, if you see something like this amazing, amazing Ferris wheel, you can add lots of hearts. What I'm doing. And then here it says, my math really just drops. Just dropped. <laughs> and then we have a reimagined teacup ride. Oh, I see, I see. So, you'd sit in here, and instead of, like, the... Nope. Come on, can I hop in there? I'm gonna hop in there. Hop. It's a little slippery. Uh, I'm getting caught on a lip. There we go, there we go. So, sit down here, and... Nope, no, that's not the right one. Nope. Yeah, okay, sit here, and... <laughs> Maybe? Maybe... There we go, there we go, come on. There we go, sit here, and I imagine it will tilt and spin and go all crazy, right? Just for one or two, though. And then... I've got to do a throw-up emote, but I think I won't do that. That might not be not be appropriate here. Oh, okay. Really fun, I like all the mirrors up above. Adds a bit of brightness to this. Very seashell vibe with those cushions. Looks looks amazing. Yeah, so I can imagine it would move all all over the place, right? Really, really fun. Looks pretty cozy with all the pillows in there too. And again, using a lot of these dwarven furnishings from Markarth. Somebody needs to mess with my lights. They got stuck. <laughs> Somebody help me. Yeah, okay, all the love, all the love. Okay, so we have the ticket booth, we have the carousel, we have the reimagined teacup ride, we have the Ferris wheel. Did I see everything? I think that will do it. Absolutely, absolutely impressive. There we go. Thank you, thank you. Nice and bright. There, I, Since the bulk of this is made out of those giant dwarven lanterns there. I imagine I imagine that this would look pretty awesome at night too. Fortunately I can't toggle that but it would stand out there very bright. Okay. Let's keep going along. There, they actually have like lights all around it too. On the outside. You know, really draw attention to itself. Ba -ba -ba. And then here it says, and this is why we need more slots for houses. Imagine how amazing this would be if they could have built more. Yeah, I mean, they were able to do four features. I, the ticket booth wasn't a lot of furnishings, but everything else was. So, yeah, they can put, like, three things in this house, and then the rest of it's empty. So, yeah, I hope that they can address the furnishing limits at some point. Maybe, maybe. I've... I'm past giving up hope on that, so... Uh... Probably shouldn't even bring it up. Maybe eventually, ten years from now. Heard rumors? Rumors? I heard rumors, like, years ago about slots for smaller houses, but that didn't ever pan out. Anyway, um, Pandora Heart has Grand Cedric Villa. They have something... Here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so this is the Grand Cedric Villa. Maybe you got this home from the Summerfall event. Is that the right one? I think so. Um, where everybody got the big house for free for the community challenge. We have, maybe you can recognize it. What does it remind you of if you maybe know? So this is awesome. So Pandora Heart has made a huge structure using a lot of the pieces that were added with the Flames of Ambition. I think there were 20, 20 structural pieces, big uh, walkways and towers and floors, and I see a lot of them actually here, and archways, I see at least six of the 20 just right here. Um, the fireplaces, seven. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome. Pandora Heart said, oh, you're here. They say, it's Game of Thrones inspired build. It's the Sept of Baylor. 
I remember watching that. I remember something not so good happens to the Sept of Baylor. Well, let's get in here. Impressive? Impressive. Okay, so, oh, I like the big custom chandelier up above. Okay, so Sept of Baylor in Game of Thrones was the place for the, the resting place for all the previous royalty. Mostly, in a, like a church service type of an area. Um, and... Yes, um, let's see. I don't know what else to get into without spoilers, because I think we're going to get the big spoiler here. Um, one thing I do remember about the show is that they put these weird painted rocks over the eyes of the dead, and they look so goofy. I think it was totally intentional, because it, like the, there'd be the characters, and they'd have all this serious dialogue uh, about power struggles and things like that, and then there'd just be this goofy dead person in the background, like, totally, totally making it weird. Um... So, anyway, um, I like that. I'm glad they did the detail. So, given that, you know, different different deities and everything um, in Game of Thrones versus um, what would be representative here in Elder Scrolls lore, they're kind of using some of these to fill in. So, different, different figures here. So, so the Maiden is Azura there instead of, instead of, uh, so, getting creative with that. Really, ooh, like, let's just take a look at the detail here. Not to disrespect the dead, but show did worse. Um, really, really love this floor pattern. Do you see this? Do you see the, the symmetry and everything going on with this? I love it. It's using the, the square floor, the rectangular floor, the circular floor, using all the solitude tiles as well. Absolutely amazing. I'm glad, I'm glad I got a good view of it from here. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. You're in my way. I need the symmetry. <laughs> I need to be right on top of you to have the symmetry. Uh, that's fine. That's fine, I hope. Um, beautiful. Stunning. Stunning. Okay. And there's more to it. So they have library and everything going on. Ooh, I like how they have the uh, rhododendrons all potted up here, too, with the Dwarven Amphoras. Ooh, moo place. Oh, can I sit here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I play play the organ? Okay, so we have an organ. I'm trying to remember how that played in. Or Anyway, they have an organ here. Pulling different things. They have a metal hand here. I'm trying to think. That could maybe represent Jamie. Maybe that's supposed to be what that is. I don't remember him playing the organ. Maybe he did. I don't remember. <laughs> um. Anyway, can imagine... Imagine... Uh, organ playing here. Oh, something special just for me here. Oh, oh, oh. Jester's box. I see it. I see it. Okay. Can I open it? Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a ah, goat. Animated goat. Ack. Where'd it go? It escaped. It escaped. I don't remember that from Game of Thrones. Mm. Oh, the goat. The goat's going to play the organ for us. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful music. <laughs> that was clever, using a trigger there, using essential housing tools to actually reposition the goat. So it's like a escape. A little bit of a surprise there. Okay. Uh, spoke me. Jump scare. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, looks like there are... Wait, doors to both sides? Oh, um, well, let me go up. Let me go up. I see, so we have a good viewing area, so... Sept of... Well, I don't know if it's even... It's an older show, and... A very... Okay, I don't know. That just goes without saying I was disappointed with the ending of Game of Thrones, and it's all... I... It kind of ruined it for me. So, anyway, I've ruined it for you. No, um... Anyway, there was a big trial going on, and so there, there ended up being a struggle between kind of the state and the church type of a thing. That's kind of the basic basis of it. And what ends up happening? Oh, the music. The music's playing here. We have, was it wildfire? The green fire. Kind of magical, alchemical fire. 
placed under the sept, under the church here. Oh no, the candle. Oh, we gotta stop them. We gotta stop them. Oh no, oh, oh, maybe. I gotta stop you. I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna come stop you. Uh oh. <laughs> You're not gonna blow up the sept. Oh no. Oh no. The slaughterfish. I think I'm stuck now. Oh no. Doom. I'm doomed. Wasn't able. To stop the set. Wow, these slaughterfish just keep going at it. Why? Oh, but gosh, I have a lot of health. Okay, that's fine. Oh, no, I died. Now terrible things will happen. <laughs> okay, let me get back up here. Okay. Um, magic, magic. Uh, magic, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh, I think, I think Pandora has one more surprise. One more surprise for me here. What? Well, let's go back to the basement. Back to the basement. Okay. Okay. We have one, one final thing. Okay, Game of Thrones, Sept of Baylor. An iconic scene. Okay, okay. Could could not stop could not stop what this acolyte was gonna do. The high sparrow, the high sparrow. Oh, you're the high sparrow, the the church leader here. Okay. Um. Do 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 do. Just waiting for the music to stop. I think. Oh, I see. I see. Here we go. Oh, I, I get to do the honors. Oh, great. Okay, so we're going to type in the trigger word here. It is... What's the correct, correct word appropriate for here? We have... Dracarys! see if it worked. Did I spell it right? Oh, no. Oh, wrong word. <laughs> did, did, did the wrong chat. Um, Dracarys! Oh, no! Oh, no! Everything's blowing up. Oh, there goes the whole the whole thing's blowing up. No, oh, it's oh explosions everywhere. Oh no, I'm back in the slaughterfish. Oh no. No, oh, the whole thing's blowing up, piece by piece. Oh no, I have the worst view of it now. Oh, slaughterfish, slaughterfish have a better view. Maybe I can go back to the beginning. Uh, see it blowing up. Can I see it blowing up? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It's blowing up. Big, ex huge explosion. <laughs> this keeps going. This keeps going. Boom. That, that's pretty well out winning the show. It just totally, it was totally overpowering explosion. Very well. Not a, not a stone left on top of another one. Okay. Okay. There. Oh, it keeps on going. How many stages of triggers did you do on this one? Gosh. Boom. Boom. That's cool. That's cool. A little bit magical. A little bit scary. Oh, no. <laughs> Get caught in the explosion here. So, again, this is using essential housing tools. I used a trigger there to reposition everything. And... I think it's now reconstructing itself. That, that's cool, though. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about the bad view, but I think you got the idea. That's way too awesome. Thank you, Pandora Heart. Way too cool. They say, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Way too fun of a build. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. And really fun, really fun. Okay, so the set gets blown up in the power struggle, right? Okay, next up, a couple homes left today. I'm gonna go to Grundum's Mage Guild Tower. Okay, in the Varlet Zavea, Alien Ruins. Ooh, they say something about some switches that will work. Okay, hopefully this will all be a good. Okay, a couple of visual effects in here. Send a guest journal. Okay, maybe some instructions. They say the mages 
We're tinkering around and all the alien switches are working again. Oh, okay. So the ruins are, are being reclaimed here. Oh, there we go. We have a big mage's tower. Huge mage's tower. Maybe I can get a good view of it from up here. Big tower. Big. There's lots of landing zones, too. I see they have an observatory on the top as well. So I think the plan here is to go in the tower. Wait, anything up here? Aha, just a nice little revered piece. Okay, I think I'm mostly going to focus on the tower. Way too cool. Let's, let's get in here. Looks like they've kind of built up around the outside a bit too. But let's let's go into the tower. Ooh, they have a magical feel to it, appropriate for the mages. Beautiful plant, so they have an alchemical research area. Oh, poor Scuttle Bloom, what are they gonna do to you? So a lot of colorful plants. Talvani furnishings, perfect mat for this. Okay, so maybe brewing up some potions here. I'll have to keep an eye out for some alien switches. Supposedly there will be some triggers here that will work. Yeah, so different landing zones here too. We have uh, Laurent, house guest here. Beautiful look to it. Oh, I like how they have the circular platform and then they have the circular floor here. Again, new pieces from Flames of Ambition. Maybe inspired a bit by that. And then beautiful views out. And the higher and higher we go, the farther we can see out. So being mages, bit of a focus on books, totally makes sense. Very bright in here, all the magical blue glowiness. Different magical artifacts on display here. Oh, we do have some visual effects. Is that our homeowner? It is, it's Crandom. Hope I'm not missing up your magical seal here. Uh, let me just scooch over here and open up this box. What's inside the box? Oh, a magical sweet roll. Beautiful, beautiful. Made with Scuttlebloom, Scuttlebloom juices. Mmm, my favorite. Honey flavor. Oh, fun, fun, fun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have a, we have a switch. What does it do? Mm. Oh, <laughs> I missed it. Let's, let's see if that'll work. Okay, magical switch will automatically make the coffer open up. Aha! Magic! Magic! Wait, 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 there's more. There's more? Wait, where are you? There's something this way. There's something this way? Oh, maybe the switch made the... Wait, wait, wait. Maybe the switch made the doors open. Nope, I'm missing something. I'm gonna screw up all your triggers. Uh, maybe they're just practicing their spells. Check out the wall above the bookcase. Oh! Oh! <laughs> uh, okay, I see, I see. They have custom art they didn't want me to miss. I probably, I would have seen it going up the stairway. Um, there it is. That's cool, that's cool. It's very... tentacly. Using the, the Dark Elf... Uh... Medallion, Dark Elf Medallion, with a Nidic Orb in the middle. So, yeah, and trust me to see it on the way up. I would have seen it. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's that's cool. And Daedric platform and the, as a backdrop there. Perfect, perfect. It's sun rays. Um, yeah, it could it could look like a sun. Um, it has that kind of a look to it. Oop, falling down the stairs. I found a gap in the stairs. Oh, I I can escape. Wait, no. Want to escape? I want to keep going up. <laughs> only, only the adepts can scale this tower. <laughs> it's otherwise mysterious to mere mortals. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Now, okay, we'll keep going up here. Ooh, I like how they have the brazier just kind of in here. Fun. Kind of lights it up. Oh, there's gonna be screwy pathing in here. That's fine. Okay, keep on going up. Up and up and up. It's not, not OSHA compliant. Yeah, I see that. 
Mind, mind the gap. Um, yeah, higher up we go, more we can see out. Beautiful area. Can't really see it very well unless if you build really high up, so that was a smart thing to do. Music box, very magical feel to it. Oh, looks like we're studying some crystals. Ooh, I like that. Kind of like a microscope type of a feel with it. Different lenses there. Fun. Really creative. Okay, so I need to keep my eye out for more of these uh, switches. There might be more. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Wait for them to signal me this. Make sure I don't miss more. Okay, that's fine. Ooh, I have good feeling about standing right here. If I know anything, everybody has to stand on the pad at the same time. Oh, somebody's not standing on a pad, obviously. Let's see, we can go look at the stars. Keep going up higher and higher. Wait, 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 it keeps going. Aha, we're at the very, very tippy top. Where are we off to? Ooh, splendid pools here, beautiful. Goat, goat managed to scale all the way up here. <laughs> Not just for the mages. Beautiful alien light well. Appropriate given the theme. Lots of magic. Magical cages and everything. More power, more light. All the blue magical feel to this place. They say nothing else to see with the switches except opening doors with them. Oh, I see, I see. So you probably have a little bit more decorated around the sides. Wait, is this custom built? I think this is custom built. Did you add this? You did add this. It looks so natural here. So this whole waterfall system has been added. I like that. So it's flowing into the uh, pool here. So the top of the var Varla Isvea Alien Ruins does have some pools at the top, but not really a source for them. So this at least makes the water feel a little, a little bit more fresh. That's cool, using those small everlasting waterfalls from Somerset. Clever. I like it. Okay, there's a couple areas downstairs. I'll go to those very quickly. The quickest way down is to not get stuck. Oh, man. There's, there's a little trick. You'll notice this whenever you do Fungal Grotto, which is if you're holding forward, you often get stuck on the little lip of it. But if you back off a little bit, then it can be a bit better. Let's see. Here we go. Now, they do have this new CP perk that makes it so you don't ever take fall damage. No, so you take less fall damage. Didn't quite work for Corundum there. <laughs> I am nimble, though. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. So, a bit of a uh, social area for... All the serious work goes in the Mage's Tower, and then they can come and relax here, right? Okay, cool. Custom table and everything. Beautiful, beautiful. And then here it says, those waterfalls are my favorite furnishings. I use them everywhere. Well, there's, it's like the only water furnishing that there really is, and you can get them. They're, they're a bit pricey from the... from the vendor, but... That works. More house guests. It's a bit more of like a living quarter here. I want to see one one more alien switch. Aha, I can come and bathe here. Perfect, perfect. Sleeping quarters. Oh. All the all the mage students here, I suppose. Mm, where are my switches at? I need I need one alien switch in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need more triggers. I need beers and running. Oh my gosh! Thank you, thank you so much. Right, I'm following. I'm, one more, one more, there's like one more area down here. Oh, wait, there's a switch. There's a switch. It opens the gate. Oh, I just cheated. That's why. <laughs> I totally missed that. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, beers and running. Magic, so we're using triggers so that the alien switch actually works the gate there. Perfect, perfect. And final. Oh, this would have opened the gate too. I totally missed it. There we go. There we go. Okay, that uh, makes sense. It's perfect fit for it. These were from the luxury vendor. I like these switches. They're very intuitive. Also, if you don't see them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna uh, keep moving along here. That's all. Thank you, thank you. Fun place. I like the magic of it. We have two two homes left today. We're going to go to Eyes of Semi Eyes. Atrium, atrium. We have a a library. Trinity says, "Amazing build. Thank you, thank you." Bears and Running says, "Thank you for doing these. We really enjoy them. Thank you so much again." <laughs> feather falling. Oh yeah, there's a feather falling feature from an add-on made by Cardinal Zero Five called Magic Carpet. And if you have it on, it'll just teleport you to the beginning of the house instead of having you fall to your death. Of course, I don't have that on ever. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the Hall of the Lunar Champion, correct? This is a home that you can earn by doing the Elsewhere main storyline. You unlock the wings as you do the storyline. Oh, I see they have some visual effects in here, just kind of tucked in here, those stained glass windows. Um, they look, look pretty nice here. So we have research areas. We have work areas. I really like this. So it's using the various crafting stations. So we have like an enchanting station here and kind of like what what would an enchanter actually work with? Different crystals and magical books and things like that. What would a jeweler, a jewelry crafter work with? We'll go with that. Um, you know, all these little intricate things, right? Or alchemy with all the wriggling plants. A little bit magical there, too. Okay, very colorful. We had a sexy stations contest ways back. One of my favorite contests I've done. And... All right, fun. And then the main thing that they have here going on is the library here. So every single one of these books is a different readable book. So you can go and like read this and um, maybe get some lore inspiration. There are thousands of lore books in ESO. So, you know, Elder Scrolls has a rich lore history and a lot of that is here in ESO. And a lot of these books are made into furnishings they can actually place. And I really like just the placement on all of these. Some of these are maybe dummy books, and then the rest of them are going to be, like, actual things that you can go and read. Um, it's pretty awesome. There are so many of them, too. Um, what I really like about this is the organization of it. Like, look look how nicely placed everything is. And they're, they're in different clusters, so they're kind of sorted a little bit. Um... And then beautiful, you know, extra things here like the the plants, really nice colors on that. So the the library areas might be a little, you know, a little dusty here, kind of all different shades of brown. But then you have that offset a bit by the very beautiful central floral arrangement here. Perfect, perfect. And more books on the other side. I like how they have the bookcases full of these little trinkets and oddities, little statuettes and things, figurines that you can earn. Some of these are antiquities, some of them are craftable, some of them are the ESO Plus statuette perks. And again, more and more and more books that you can read. All, all these different books, all organized, very nicely done. Beautiful. Then probably more crafting on the other side. So again, using the crafting stations and making good use of them. So we have like a clothing area and provisioning area, blacksmithing area, and maybe more blacksmithing there. And woodworking, fantastic. Ba ba ba. Different items. It could well be that the different items could represent the different types of things that are here too. Not sure if that's what they were going for, but they might be kind of clustered together that way. <laughs> Cat, you're you're not a little statuette. Let's see, can I go through here? I think there is also a little bit of a living area here for a scholar. Or must be a scholar that lives here, right? Ooh, a bit more of an area. Very private. Okay, beautiful. I really like how they've, you know, added drapes and carpets and everything. Just gives it a bit more of a warm feel to it. Good, good calming blue and brown and cream color color palette. 
A nice relaxing place for a bath. Probably smells like musty books here. Perfect, perfect. I don't quite fit in this bathtub, but that'll work. So a beautiful home and plus a library. Love it, love it. Okay. Merkmeyer bookcases. Yeah, I think they were Merkmeyer ones. Let's go back. There are a lot of different bookcases, and you know, they, they fit pretty well within you know, it's the Elder Scrolls. You know, emphasis on the scrolls and the reading and the lore and the rich history of the cultures and everything. A lot going on. Thousands of years of history. Um, very immersive. And, yeah, so there are lots of different types of bookcases and books featured within this. So it works perfectly. So I know a lot of people are drawn to that. And it's way too fun. I've been picking up more and more lore, the more quests I've done as well. And I try to read a lot of the books as well when I come across them. You go with a follower. Thank you, thank you. Awesome vibe. Yes, okay. Thank you, Eyes of Semi Eyes. Beautiful, beautiful Athenium Atrium. Okay, last up. There might be might be some people in here. I kinda hope there are. Yeah, good bookcases. I <laughs> have more cats up there. Beautiful. Okay, Maga Septum has an Aeliad Ruin as well. They have the Temple of Artemis. Oh, there are some people here. Perfect. Okay, so there might be a couple people kind of just about. So I think there's going to be a... Okay, there'll, there'll be a bit of an ex explanation there. No, oh, it's going up, going up, going up. Oh, there's something up there. Okay, let's look at this. With the UI on. Oh, oh no. Um, there we go. Temple of Artemis. This is a custom lore book using essential housing tools. They say, The Temple of Artemis is a Greek temple created in 550 BC and dedicated to the goddess Artemis. Artemis was a daughter of Zeus and the twin sister of Apollo. The temple was located in Ephesus, an ancient Greek city near present-day Turkey. Over the course of time, the temple was destroyed and rebuilt many times. Today, the Temple of Artemis stands in ruins, but is still one of the seven wonders of the world. This work is an attempt to capture the former glory of the temple and imagine what it may have been like stepping in the footsteps of the gods themselves. Okay, so let's get up here. So, trying to be a bit of a real recreation. Oh my gosh, I can see it coming up here. I, I'm going to look at it without falling off this platform. I don't know if I can manage that. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. It's so bright there, too. I see there's like a lot of light in it as well. It's probably be impressive even at nighttime. Okay. Wow. There's like a lot. There's even like landing zones here. Beautiful, beautiful. So, using the different statuettes, like Debella here, filling in for, you know, Greek gods and things like that. I guess that would be Artemis. There. Okay, amazing. You're nerding out. <laughs> beautiful use of the Eleanor columns. Um, I see that they're using, again, more of the solitude structural pieces. I think that these are those big platforms. Markarth square platforms. Yeah, one of my favorite new pieces that was added. Uh, they're huge. And using the different archways to make a bit of a flower design. Maybe maybe that would be uh, appropriate. I guess I don't know the imagery of Artemis, but um, I think this works perfect. Perfectly. Beautiful, beautiful. It's super huge. Like, look, look how huge this complex is. Um, great use. I like how they've they put these floors in here adds this polished brass look to it just makes it look all that more luxurious imagine a big temple like this probably would have been all decked out with a lot of the fine things oh yeah we do have like platforms and things too okay cool i like how you didn't have to but you did shove a windmill way 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 out there just to kind of add a little bit to the scenery Oftentimes, or tower way out there, too. Yeah, oftentimes, you might not be able to get that far out, but you can use a housing editor and push things that far out. So it just kind of changes up the landscape a bit here. 
Um, otherwise, it might feel a little bit emptier. This gives it more of a semblance of more of a civilization happening instead of this being a kind of a one-off type of a thing. It's kind of out in the middle, isolated. Okay. Well, let's get into the temple here. Well, there's more on the other side, too. I'll make my way around. Definitely a lot of detail. So it seems like at the top we have some nice places for bathing, maybe, primarily. Maybe some sort of a uh, ritualistic bathing thing going on with this. Or I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's just the, the priests of the temple or something that would use this. I don't know if they, they would imagine this would be very open to the public, but maybe, maybe it would be. I don't know, I don't know in my history on that. Um, or maybe it would be dependent on the the time, right? Which which rebuilding was it? Love the custom fountains here. Stunning, very bright, great use of all the lighting here. Maybe this is just kind of how I, they imagined things might be inside here, because uh, uh, Varla is Vela. Aloid Ruins do have these built-in pools at the top, so it works pretty well. Oh, there we go! <laughs> I found the role players. They look more like priests than anything else, right? Except for you. Maybe. So we have older... Oh, oh, no, I'm totally... Oh, no, they look hostile. Just get back to your drinking and dancing. There we go, there we go. <laughs> old loot type of look. One of them is a seer. Oh, maybe, maybe. I definitely see a lot of them. Um, no, that's... Maybe, maybe one of them is. Fun place, fun place. I like the color scheme going on with it, too. Fun custom places. Yeah, the whites and the blues and the golds. That's, that's how I would imagine that being. Kind of an old, fancy Greek style. Especially with, like, the white dresses. They're not dresses, they're robes. Whatever they are. Anyway, fun place, fun place. Okay, and I didn't really see down here, did I? There's like even more. Custom chariot. Oh, way too fun. Joey Chaos with the follow. Thank you. Welcome to our PC and a housing hike. Touring some player houses. Maga Septum with this amazing temple. It's just incredibly impressive. Um, certain talent to take a look at these furnishings and thank you, thank you, thank you. try to think of how to use these. I, I really like how there's like a place here for the writer. Um, if I can hop up here. Um, go. Forward. Is that, I don't know how to direct this horse. <laughs> Hopefully this will work. That's awkward with a reset. And Liz Teo with a big raid. Thank you, thank you. We're just wrapping up our PCNA housing hike right now. We're in Maga Septum's Varla Isvea Aelid Ruins. They have a Temple of Artemis here. A recreation of how this ancient temple might have looked. And it is absolutely stunning. And we do have a couple people joining the party here. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll let myself have a drink here. Okay. And I think that will do it. I have a dance here, too. What's a, what's a good ancient Greek dance? <laughs> this is definitely how the Greeks danced, right? I think so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe we can just do magic. Do magic here. Magic, magic, perfect, perfect. Tatanka with Risa. Okay, well, let's wrap up here. Um, and then we'll do some giveaways for Twitch chat, and all will be good. Oh, yeah, it's laundry time. Um, missed it by a minute. There we go. A little, a little too festive here. Well, I can go even fancier. There we go, with a bow. No, I think this is a little bit more down-to-earth, calm plays. We'll, we'll take things slower. I, well, I <laughs> just don't want that stuff there. There are vibes here. Yeah, okay. Good enough, good enough. Okay. Fun place. So thank you everybody that opened up their homes for me today. I'll wrap that up. 
So we went to, we started with Linda's Loyax Observatory Prior with a fancy submarine under the water. That was fantastic. We went to Airy Summers Antiquarian Alpine Gallery with the carnival and the giant bright Ferris wheel. That was, that was wowing. We went to Pandora Hearts Grand Cedric Villa with the Sept of Baylor and it blew up. Too much wildfire. And we had Corundum's Varlas Vea with a Mage's Tower. Huge, great views, and with the triggers, fun, fun, fun. And we went to Eyes of Semi Eyes Hall of Lunar Champion with the library, absolutely gorgeous. And we ended up here in Magaseptum's Aelia Druins with the Temple of Artemis. Fantastic design. So I'll get some screenshots of these and put them up on my website. If you ever need some decoration inspiration, check out spicyeconomics.com. And I'll upload this to YouTube. If you're watching there, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. And we'll continue to have fun here at the channel. So, more house tours and contests and other fun stuff. So, as we've seen, you can do amazing things. Get super creative with it. Use furnishings in creative, new, inspiring ways. You know, looking at different textures. Thinking about how you can cobble things together. And just have some fun with it. Personalize it. Make it a fun place for you and guildies Happy and friends. Friday. And Tatanko, you're amazing. And... So have fun with housing, have fun with ESO, and stay spicy. Boo.